After just over 17 years, the Land Rover Freelander is no more. But before you mourn its demise, Land Rover is replacing it almost immediately with this, the new Discovery Sport. It will be offered as a seven-seater in the UK. We'll have a brand new premium interior, and we have brought a team of what car readers along to see what they make of the new car. We've got a wide selection of potential owners today, like Land Rover fans Mark and Elaine, who are considering a Discovery Sport, Eric, who currently drives an Audi SQ5, Paul and Orny, and Chris, who all own Freelander 2s, and finally, we have Steve, who owns a Volkswagen Tiguan, but has already put a deposit down on a Discovery Sport. Now we've met them, let's see what they make of the new car. The thing that stands out is how they've packaged it all together. So they've got a really premium quality feel. They've engineered a lot of space in a vehicle which, from a overall size-wise, isn't much bigger than, I guess, the Evoque. Everything feels really well screwed together and actually has a very high quality feel. The new infotainment screen is a real step forward for Land Rover. It's, it's very quick, it's very responsive, it's a lot clearer, and the actual um, resolution of the screen's a lot better as well. The boot space is, is great, uh, it's a really good boot space. The rear seats are quite practical to put up and take down, although for somebody of my size, not very easy to get in and out of, but my kids will love them, I'm sure. Um, the actual middle bench, the flexibility that provides you either with a bigger boot or huge leg room in that middle row with the sliding seats, they happily sit there for a 200 mile journey. I have to say I really struggled to find anything I really disliked, which is, and I've tried very hard and comparing it to my Range Rover, it's, you know, the, the feel of the um, interior is really good. I'd have to give it five out of five. I really like it, it was uh, it's just like a mini discovery really, but it does still have a little bit of a freelander about it from the side, so yeah, really like it, first impressions. I was worried the back window was going to be a bit small like the Evoque, but it seems to be fine. It's definitely got much more quality feel than the old Freelander, so it's get, getting towards that quality feel that's in the Range Rover, but without having that, that, that sort of feeling that you're driving this enormous vehicle that you don't want to take into city centre so much or to multi-storey car parks. So I've sat in the back in the third row of seats and it wasn't the easiest to get out, but it, wasn't re it was reasonably comfortable for small journeys, even for an adult. Um, I think the downside is when the, when the third row is up, there's no storage at all in the back. You've got both the, both the third row, but practically good sized boot and the seats would go fold down very, very quickly and easily. Four out of five, I think the only thing that lets it down really is that lack of storage in the, in the back row. I think they've got a good subtle balance between where the past has come from, good heritage from Land Rover, to a more modern look and feel to what we see now. The, the lowering, I think, really helps the design factor. Uh, and also as it helps the aerodynamics, but I believe also the capabilities and the ground clearance is also the, the same as it was before on, on the Freeland, which makes it a really good all-round capable vehicle. And uh, inside, there's just so much space. Um, one of the things to note was also amazing visibility. The speed of the infotainment system is actually quite uh, surprising. A lot of them tended to be slower and clunky, whereas this felt really, you know, modern, super quick. I think the thing for me, unfortunately, was the uh, area around the wheel trims. Um, it's the, with the colour pattern the way it is right now, it, it just looked a bit out of place. Um, but I think it's uh, an option. Once you change the colour, you'll see that blend in and it will look the bee's knees. Definitely a four out of five. Um, it's not what you expect. It's, it's closer to the Evoque, I suppose, than the current Freelander and a far departure from the familiar kind of discovery shape, but the, the room inside is surprising and it's very, very roomy. Even the boot is very, very roomy. Probably bigger than the current Freelander. The, the seats are fine, they're very comfortable. Um, there's lots of leg room. Even the rear seats go back and forth, which is new. So you have a choice of more leg room or more boot room, which is great. More than, more than I'm used to in the Freelander. The headroom is, is as before, more than adequate. Uh, the seven seats, I think, is um, an interesting option. I don't particularly need to see why it needs to be a standard, um, but as an option, optional extra, yeah, it would be useful for some families perhaps, but I don't need it. So for me, it's a, yeah, a nice gimmick. I, I think they've done a superb job. It's a cool car. It's going to sell like hotcakes. I think what is good is the flexibility, what you can do with the interior and then the panoramic roof, it really gives a feeling of space. And the seats are extremely comfy. They are really easy to get in and out and in a position. 
but you have to be really sort of under 12, I think, and really flexible to get in there. But, but it's really handy to have them. It was easy to adjust what you want because you could sit, you could move the seat in so many different positions. It was good. Hmm. Four and a half. Uh, I was worried it was going to be something completely new and different as they changed the name, but it's not. It's still recognisably a sort of evolution from the Freelander. To see all this modern technology on here is really, really good. Exactly what it should be for a brand new car. All your sort of common controls, your typical car stuff, really easy to grab. You can get straight on there, um, and all your infotainment stuff is separated off where it should be nice and easy to get to uh, and you've even got quick access buttons down the side as well so uh, straight into the phone, the camera, the parking sensors, really really easy. It's a bit of a shame they haven't brought the digital dash in here, you kind of, a premium brand you'd expect them to be at the sort of cutting edge with those sorts of digital features um, but it's really really high quality and it, if the load bed had been flat and you didn't have those weird little bits of plastic on the outside it would be five star all the way, four out of five. It feels quite spacious inside and I think in comparison to the way that it looks from the outside it looks a little bit small like a, a sort of mid-size SUV. I like the fact that it moves forward and back. I like the fact that you can recline the seats so if you've got a lot of luggage you can actually move the seats forward so you've got actually more luggage space. Getting in and out of the back is, is quite a challenge. I myself jumped in and, and tried to get out. There's, there's no grips or anything to help you get out but I think if it was being used for more uh, casual use for, for two people in the boot or it was for children, I think it's ideal. I, I was particularly interested in looking at the, uh, the uh, infotainment system. Um, having had a discovery in the past, I found it was quite slow. Uh, this is a lot quicker. Um, it looks a lot better. It's much more intuitive. Uh, the graphics are certainly a lot better. Uh, and I'm led to believe that it's, it's going to be even more advanced when it comes to production. There's, there's sort of half a dozen buttons down that side, another half a dozen there, there's loads on the steering wheel. It just feels like there's quite a lot of buttons that potentially you've got to manoeuvre, get used to. Um, so that would be my only gripe. Um, my only reservation about this particular one is, is it's the HSE Luxury. So I'm not quite sure that would be the model I'd plump for, so I'd, I'd need to see the sort of spec and a touch and feel of, of maybe one of the mid-range models and it looks like uh, at first release we're going to get a Freelander engine that's been tweaked. Um, would that put me off? Possibly. I think it would depend on how long you've got to wait for the new engine, what the price is going to be. Um, but no, I mean if, if it was reasonably economical, if it was reasonably uh, inexpensive to buy, um, you know, if the auto um, worked really well with that engine, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a problem with taking an early model. So my score would be five. We'll be driving the new Discovery Sport in December, so keep an eye on whatcar.com for our full verdict then. As well as our reader preview, we have also done a video on the five key things that we know about the Discovery Sport so far. Click here to watch that. Also, click here to read all the latest about the Discovery Sport, including pricing, release dates, and specifications.